Hello guys and welcome back to my channel. If you don't know me already, my name is Sarah and I'm a flower farmer in East Yorkshire in the UK and I make lots of videos about flower farming in general from sowing seeds to looking after the plants and preparing flower beds and all of the little fun projects that we do in between as well. So recently if you've been watching my videos you'll know that I've been really getting into regenerative farming and natural farming techniques and just doing whatever I can to increase the soil biology inside the soil. So we decided back in January to purchase um, some worms for a worm farm. So we were um, particularly excited about farming worms because of so many benefits that they have to soil life and plant life um, and plant health. Um, and I, I mentioned these in a previous video that I made when we first purchased the worms. So when we purchased the worms, I made a little video about that and we purchased, I think, three kilos of worms to begin with and I based the design of my worm beds on the Nature's Always Right method that um, he used on his video on his YouTube channel. I'll link that down in the description below. And um, I was really excited about using this technique because we were going to be um, putting some of our um, kitchen waste, garden waste, etc and um, animal poo into these tote buckets, these 45 litre um, box storage boxes and then we were going to wait for the worms to finish that compost um, so that the bins were nearly full and then stack another bin on top so that we could um, allow the worms to move upwards into some new bedding that was fresh, freshly prepared for them to move into and the, the, the box below would be ready um, as vermicompost for us to use um, on the flower beds as part of our soil mixes and as um, worm tea preparations and things like that. So I was really excited about that and um, as soon as I got them I knew it was something that I was going to be really interested in. So quickly after that my husband Rob he got really excited about the worms as well um, and their potential especially in the um, kind of fishing market I suppose, fishing baits and things like that and the potential that they have in that area of um, the market as well so what we decided to do was purchase another 15 kilos of worms so I'll take you back to when those 15 kilos of worms arrived and um, show you the setup of how um, we've decided to um, house those worms because that's a little bit different to um, the worms that we started off with. We've had our delivery so we've got the red wigglers in there and I've just bobbed the denger beaners into there if you can see them in the bags. So I'm going to have a bit of a sort through, try and weigh them into certain groups because I think, I think we ordered 20,000 in total but I can't remember how many of them were denger beans and how many were the red wigglers so I'll have a bit of a workout and come back to you. So this is our new setup for the new worms we've got some racking up in our new worm room and we've been uh, we've decided to use these polystyrene boxes which are shallow um, but allow enough volume to put bedding into for the worms so this uh, method is used by a lot of worm farmers that i've seen online and it allows us to store lots of worms in a small area and we did purchase 10 kilos of dendrobina worms, which are a slightly different um, species to the red wigglers, which are the original worms that I purchased, also known as Isenia fetida. And these are more popular in um, the fishing bait um, market, but um, can still be used to compost down the material that is put into the beds. So we ended up putting half a kilo of red wigglers into each of the boxes and we put a kilo worth of dendrobinas into um, the boxes as well. So we had 10 um, boxes of each species and in hindsight we probably would have put half a kilo of dendrobinas um, making 20 boxes because they are larger worms. Although we were putting... Um, 
probably a similar number of worms into each boxes. It did, um, they, they do look very densely populated and worms um, self-regulate their own population. So if there are plenty of worms in the population, they won't breed as prolifically. So what we are going to do as we are moving forward is split some of these boxes of dendrobenas in half and um, have half a kilo roughly each of dendrobenas in each box. So that is basically it. We now have some racking with polystyrene boxes on it. And the polystyrene boxes, polystyrene boxes are the perfect kind of width, depth, length for worm beds and the amount of material that we need for each one. And since I filmed that section where we were putting those worms in, it has now been about three weeks to four weeks of the worms being in those new beds there and um, yesterday I actually sieved out one of the beds because it is looking ready now. Um, the worms look like they've gone through most of the material, they've laid cocoons and they are just looking really good so I decided to sieve out the worms, um, split them in two actually because I think that the dendrobena boxes are quite overpopulated so I um, decided to split those in two and put half in one bed half in the other and also at the same time I'm doing an experiment with the free compost that I get um, to see whether they would like to use that as a bedding material and then I mix that in with some horse manure as well so and um, they usually take a couple of days to settle in whenever you put them into new bedding material so we'll see in a few days time whether they really appreciate that kind of bedding or not but yeah so we've got the tiger worms um, that we originally started with and we've got the dendrobenas and I think dendrobenas are a more popular fishing worm but one of Rob's friends came to visit the other day who has a, a fishing bait shop and he said that he thinks that people will be just as interested in the tiger worms as well so seems to me like they are breeding prolifically and really enjoying the environment that we've given them so what we did in these beds here is we put more soil warming cables and um, insulation board that we routed out just like we did in the first video um, just to get the temperature up so that they're breeding even though the temperatures are still quite cool outside so we, probably within the next few weeks we'll turn that off because we won't need that anymore and actually it's probably not necessary at all for us to be having heating uh, except for hatching worms so um, the worm eggs like a warmer temperature to hatch but um, we'll see we'll just see we're, we're do, doing lots of experiments and um, seeing how things go but we're really positive about it and it's really exciting so these beds here we, we're just kind of having those set off in the background and they're just doing their own thing and we're adding bits to them bits of coffee grounds bits of um, food and things and then we are feeding them uh, every few days with chicken mash so that is ground up chicken food um, we, well we are buying chicken food um, it's in this barrel here um, but it does have some whole grain wheat in it so we have been grinding it down just so that that wheat doesn't germinate um, and the ground up stuff is in this box here so we just sprinkle a handful on every couple of days um, we don't we try not to overfeed them so we wait until all the food is gone before we feed again and last time I actually um, ground up some eggshells and mixed it in with the food because worms have gizzards like birds do and they need something to help break down the material in their stomachs. So it's just fascinating all the stuff that I'm learning about worms and worm breeding and um, so let me tell you about something else that we've got going on here. So when we got these worm bins originally I um, after about a month or two months um, no sorry three weeks after about three weeks uh, we noticed that there was lots of eggs in the bins so we decided to sieve them out Rob actually counted the worms and we counted oh sorry counted the cocoons we had about a thousand cocoons so we put them in that box there in the top right hand corner and those are all starting to hatch now so from taking the cocoons out on the 19th of February to now which is the 1st of April um, 
lots of those cocoons have hatched so we are just waiting now for those to become mature and start producing their own eggs so that should be um, probably within three to four months time as well so exciting stuff and I've been looking at the worm compost under the microscope as well and there's loads of really interesting stuff in there so I'm really looking forward to doing foliar feeds on uh, the plants and seeing how the vermicompost um, affects the plant health and I will definitely be doing setting up some experiments with um, worm, tea, uh, worm teas, worm extracts, using worm compost um, in my seed mixes, in my soil mixes, in my potting on mixes and getting back to you on all of those because I love watching experimentation videos on YouTube where people have set up proper experiments and see whether it works or not. So if anybody's got any questions about worm farming, if, it, if there's anything that I've missed, this, this video was kind of um, made in loads of different bits and bobs so I'm hoping that I've managed to explain everything properly and um, show you what's going on with the worm farm and I um, hope you are just as excited about it as I am because in the future I am hoping to be able to um, sell worms, sell vermicompost and worm products um, for you guys, for um, you guys who are interested in gardening and things so keep your eyes peeled on that um, as it progresses. And when I sieved out the box that I sieved out yesterday um, I actually got two kilos of vermicompost from that bin and obviously um, measuring it in kilos isn't probably the best um, way to measure it because it obviously it's got the weight of the water in there so probably um, going by litres is a better thing so maybe maybe I've got just under two litres or one and a half litres so if I got two kilos out of that bin, we've got 20 bins, so that means potentially every month I could pr be producing um, 44 kilos of worm compost, so that's definitely um, something to get excited about. Thanks so much for taking the time to watch this video, I really appreciate it. If you liked it, don't forget to give it a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe if you're not already. See you next time!